Alright, let's try and make some actual progress this time. So start out at screen 42. And we're going to be making a dungeon very soon. First, let's close in this area. Oops. Uh, I want to have this one go to the right. I mean, it doesn't really matter since we're not going to be using the whole map, but whatever. Uh, do crud like that. And then I guess that's pretty much all that needs to be put here. Might as well add a couple trees just for detail, but those are completely unnecessary. Then, uh, let's put some enemies. We haven't added any enemies in a while. Let's see what kind we can have here. Haven't used already. I mean, there's plenty of them that we haven't used, but... Uh, okay, now actually we're going to use some old ones, because I want to show something else. Let's go to a place that already has enemies, like this. Press C to copy the screen. Go back here. Go into the enemies and say paste enemies from and there you have the same ones you could change them up a bit if you want I'm not going to and then here's something else I have to show is pattern if you want you can have them enter from the sides so now they should be coming in from this right side I should probably move this tree though yeah you know what forget the trees you don't need them and to make this screen a little bit more challenging we can also have some rocks falling down. Like the Zora, you can add more. The initial falling rocks thing adds three, and then any that you add on the enemies page after that we'll put on one more. So anyway, well, let's make another one. This is a very, very minimalistic area here. This is going to be where the dungeon entrance is. How did I have that on the other one? I want this one to be the same. So, do that. Now, how should we have the dungeon entrance? Let's just make a normal thingy thing. Let's copy the same enemies. Add the falling rocks to make it annoying. And then we'll put the dungeon entrance thing on the thingy bob thing, thing. So draw it on. Be sure to use the cave. Let's put on some of these guys. Don't forget to set the blue and the green square thingies. And then this screen is set up pretty much except for the tile warp. So now it's time to actually make the dungeon. To do that, we're going to do it on a different map. You can press the period and comma keys to switch maps. This, sh you, If you saved from a blank quest like I did, you should already have a map too. If not, you can add them here. Uh, then we'll have to make a D map soon. But for now, let's just get started on making their first screen. Let's scroll down a bit. Uh, never mind. Uh, switch to the C set, I guess, and let's, you have to go to Tools, Template, wait, find the dungeon floor tile thing, uh, and do that. And now it looks like crap, but if you press a button, a, a number button, it should change to a good color. Let's make this one color 1, because it's dungeon 1. And then that's pretty much all there is to making a basic dungeon screen. You just use the template. You have to set what you want the floor tile to be. And that's about it. The template calls from screen 83. So if you ever change it, it, it pretty much only takes the walls. Whatever's in the middle doesn't matter. But if you ever change that, then your template's going to be messed up. You don't have to use the template, but for simple quests, it's the best way to go. And there's a lot of strange nuances with the dungeon system that I'll have to be exp that I'll explain later on. But for now, let's just leave it as is. Um, let's actually I'm going to take a break here so the audio doesn't cut out. Okay, I just needed to do that to make sure that the audio isn't horrible like usual. So anyway, I guess 
now would be a good time to make the new D map. So let's go to the first blank one to fill in all the info here. Map, this time it's on map 2. Type, let's leave it as dungeon. You can actually make dungeons as caves, but that's more complicated. Let's leave it like this for now. Midi, I'll have to add one of those later on. Color, we had it set to 1. Keep in mind that if you ever set it to 3, there's a quest rule called Fade, like Palette 3 or something like that. It's really stupid. It like changes all the colors in Palette 3 for some reason, so you'll want to have that checked off. Level, you have to set to 1. The level number matters for Triforce pieces. It like When you pick up a Triforce piece, it will look at what level number you're currently in, and so that's which numbered piece it will give you. So if you made the level like 13, it wouldn't give you one because there is no piece number 13. Continue here, sure. Uh, the continue place, we're going to make this level be a basic square thingy. And you enter on the bottom left, so that would be screen 70. And the Triforce will be at the upper right, which would make it um, 33, I want to say. Name, let's just call it level 1. DMAP title, I'm going to leave it like that. And then this map thing I'll get to in a second. So. Let's copy the rum and paste it a whole bunch of times. This is going to be a 4x4 square. Now go back to the DMAP. You'll see that it shows up here. Let's draw on the map thing. Except, we don't want it to be like that. Let's make it centered. So you have to click and drag this thingy. Then, draw the map on this using the different squares. Let's leave the middle to be invisible. Those, there'll still be rooms there, but you can't see them on the map when you get it. So hit OK, and uh-oh, the dots are offset. The compass one was wrong anyway. So I think it should be 43 or... yeah. But see, they're wrong. That's because we shifted the map. That's something that you always have to look out for. If you ever shift the map in the DMAP editor, all, all, I mean, all of your coordinates are going to be off. Now, because I moved it two to the left, we have to set all coordinates two to the right. So this will be 45, this will be 72, and now they line up properly. And that's not only for that, that goes for every single warp that you set. So you have to keep that in mind at all times. Okay, um... Now... Let's switch to another C set. There should be one for sand. Let's put this sand stuff at the start. They usually do that in the dungeons in the real game. And then put these statues on. You'll see that they have combo types of L statue and R statue. There's also a C statue for center. Uh, that's used for when you want statues to shoot fire, which is an enemy flag, and I'll be explaining that better later. But now, there's one thing that's missing here, and that is... So, go to doors. We want one on the bottom. And here's all the different choices of doors that you have. It's currently set to wall. Let's just make it a passage. And now I have a door. It's as simple as that. Keep in mind that when doing a simple dungeon like this, you'll always want to add doors like that using the doors function. Do not try and draw them on using this because it probably won't work if you do it. So let's set the rest of the basic info here. The blue and green squares. Isle warp to... no, actually it's a side warp to the overworld. It should be an entrance exit because you're switching D-maps. Always have to use that kind of warp when you're switching D-maps. Screen was 43, I think. Yes, okay, then this should be tile warp to level 1, entrance exit, screen was 70, but then it shifted, so it's 72, and there it is. All that's correct, save it, that's it for now, I'll test it next time. Hey, uh, just making a couple quick corrections here. First of all, I added a meaty to the dungeon, uh, I didn't really need to show that, 
as you already know how to do that. Uh, we forgot to put an under combo here. There should be because there's Armoses. Uh, and then one thing that really bothered me is on these ocean screens, somehow I failed to notice that there's these rounded corners for the water. And they look a lot better than the crap that I put on. Except it looks like, yeah, they're kind of weird. But anyway, uh, you can fix up those screens if you want. That's really it.